So we're going to use a set of Hastings, uh, two sets of rings, two different manufacturers from the vendors. You'll either get Hastings or Grants. They both offer them. One's a little more expensive than the other. A little difference in design, mainly on the oil ring. Uh, one brand typically will come through with a couple of scrapers and a, you can kind of see the picture, a little uh, spring uh, spacer that goes in place. Some of them come through where they have a, uh, on the on the O-ring, uh, they'll have an expander that goes in behind the oil ring. So don't be surprised. Uh, from the same supplier, the same brand, I've got different configurations of rings, so don't be too too worried about it, too concerned. Uh, they are marked. Some of them are marked, some of them aren't marked. So there's a set of instructions that comes in each box of rings, and it kind of identifies from top to bottom what rings go where. So the rectangle ring, which we have, is the top ring, and there's a bevel ring, which will be the number two ring, and it does have a dot on it, and the dot would go up towards the top of the engine, so the bevel was down inside on the piston. There's some other configurations here that don't mean anything to us. There's a rule of thumb that we want ring gap, and I've got one ring set in here that I want to check right now, uh, four thousandths per inch of diameter. In this case, we've got it bored out 60 thousandths, so you do the math and it turns out to be 15.25 uh, clearance. Uh, this is 15 plus and it's fine and you can do this with an old piston if you got a ring on it but you do want to get them in there square you can build a plug if you're doing quite a few you could just drop in and get the ring squarely in and measure it and I can tell by looking at that I probably got about 20 so you don't want them any tighter. There's probably some kind of, if you were into high performance engines, uh, there's probably a minimum gap that you want. I know in one of my race engines I run zero gap rings, but uh, that wouldn't be what I would recommend the average Model T put in it. Uh, we're not running very much compression. I'm running nine and a half to one on that one, so I don't know. I got talked into zero clearance. So again, I've got probably another 20 there. So I would do the same thing. Check all the rings, make sure that I have minimum of 16 thousandths ring gap. And if it was too tight, you can just take a small file, clamp it in the vise. These are cast iron rings. Just clamp it in the vise, pinch it together on both sides and just drag it back and forth a time or two and then check it again and open up that clearance. So all at minimum clearance is the thing that we're concerned about. As these rings get hot they expand so you gotta have some room for them to grow up or they're just going to pinch and then they're really going to go out and cause a lot of wear so again we'll do all four of them and check our ch check our clear check our gap make sure that we got good gap on it and then we'll assemble the rings onto the pistons and and, uh, and uh, start <coughs> start the process of putting all the pistons into place We're ready to install our connecting rod to our piston. We know that we want to have the wrist pin towards the cam and we want the expansion slot. Some people call it that. I call it a way of letting oil get in to that side because the engine splashes up onto here and this side doesn't get as much splash. And uh, so the split goes away from the cam, the wrist pin goes towards the cam. If you install the piston backwards and this split is on the cam side, you'll have a smoker. 
it will throw up so much oil through there that the oil ring can't handle it, can't scrape it out of the way, and it'll start smoking at idle. Don't ask me how I know that. I learned that one the hard way. But anyhow, uh, the other thing that you should mention is when we're tightening in our wrist pin bolt, we don't want to grab the rod or grab the piston, so just a, an alignment tool of some sort supports the piston. And when I go to torque this thing down to oh, 25 pounds or whatever, I want to end up where my cutter pin hole is in such a place that I can wrap the cutter key around the rod. Just putting the cutter key in that thing without it being attached to something well, it doesn't do any good, and I find an awful lot of engines with cotter keys in there, and it just doesn't do any good. I mean, it it, it could back out. Uh, some people don't use the cotter key. Uh, lock horses will work here, too. Uh, it's just whatever you prefer. Uh, I go ahead and put it together the way Henry did, so I use a cotter key. Another technique is uh, put a piece of safety wire and wrap around the rod and through the through the hole just to keep it from backing out. Uh, you torque these things down enough, uh, they go for the ride, they shouldn't come back out, but uh, do use some method of locking it in place. Uh, cotter key, safety wire, or a lock horse, or whatever your choice is. So we'll start, and we want to put a little lubrication on our rod, wrist pin. The wrist pin also has a notch in it, and that notch is so when the bolt goes through the rod, that wrist pin now is locked in place because that bolt shoulder is right up into that into that groove. Uh, and you ought to take a little care of making sure that that's somewhat lined up before you run that wrist pin bolt down in through there because I have had occasions where I've seen those have been just a little offset and somebody's ran the ran the uh, bolt down through it and galled it so it's just a matter of sliding things together here and getting that wrist pin lined up to where I can start the wrist pin bolt. I've got it started and I'm just going to run her down in there. snug and now I'm going to go get my torque wrench so I've just got it down snug and but I'm looking also I want to get my cotter pin which I'm probably going to have to shorten that one I want to get my cotter key to go through the hole but give me some room to wrap around The rod. So if you'll look at what I did here, I've got my cotter key extended quite a ways beyond the uh, web of the uh, connecting rod, and I like to do that. I'm just going to come in here and catch it this way and kind of push it in, and then. bend this end around the rod and keep it in there tight and around the back side of that rod. Oops.
so I've wrapped one leg of the car key around the rod web. And then I'm just going to bend this one over. Close that around the bolt. Another shot at this. And so I've got my I've got my wrist pin in there or my um, car key in there solid and it's wrapped around the rod. So if the bolt was to back try to back out, it's gotta work against this leg of the car key going around. Like I said, just put the car key in here just without it being hooked around the rod doesn't do any good. So you can do like what I've just done here. Or you can do safety wire and figure eight around it. Or just a lock washer in there will work. But like I said, I do it kind of like what I what what Henry did. So we've got four more sets of these or three more of these to do and then we'll uh, install the the uh, rings. So we're going to install our rings and I just set it on my vise. I don't clamp on the rod or anything. I'm just setting it just to kind of support things. And there's a couple of different tools. This isn't the correct tool for doing me that when we shot a lot of the video on installing the connecting rod and the piston we uh, we didn't have the proper tool so we went out and got one and we were so thrilled that we got it we came back and we installed the rings and didn't film it so I'm going to cover that right now the first ring is the, that goes on is the oil ring it goes into the third gland We've got our little tool. This is an inexpensive. There's all different kinds of these. This just happens to be a fairly inexpensive one, but it's just a matter of expanding the ring, putting it into its place. Oops, I slipped. I'm putting it into the third ring. The second ring, the uh, paper, there's paperwork that comes with the rings. And the second ring is identified, uh, has a bevel on it, and the bevel in this case goes down, and they do have a dot. Sometimes these rings are not marked, so you have to really follow the instructions, but this one has a dot, so the dot goes up. Again, I'll just expand it and put it into its appropriate gland and the top ring in this case is just a rectangular shaped ring it doesn't make any difference there's no top or bottom to it uh, different manufacturers of rings that you will get and even from the same manufacturer you will get different configurations of rings from Hastings it's, that still works for a Model T uh, so there's there's different types so make sure that you look at the instructions check for dots dimples anything that that would identify what goes where so we'll install our top ring compression ring and that's our three rings and you'll notice that they are quite loose and we'll use a ring compressor when we go to install them. If you don't get those compressed down you'll break these rings going in. Um, orientation of the of the uh, gap is you want to make sure I, I like to set them up about a third away from each other so I just split them. I don't know that there's a, a, a more appropriate way or not but I just kind of set them around to where gaps here, gaps here, and a gaps here. And we have already checked the gap on our rings in a, in a, in a prior segment of our video presentation here. So I know that the, I know that the gap is within acceptable limits. So this piston is together and uh, ready to be lubricated up and installed in a